Well, the Nasdaq is inching towards record territory, but some investors are worried that lucrative tech stocks may be losing steam. A Stansberry research analyst says that to stick, though, with the FANG stocks or stand um, missing out on some of the big gains that are ahead. Apple stock has been a high flyer so far this year. Taking a look at that stock up over the last month, around 11 percent so far for the year, though, up nearly 30 percent. Joining us now is Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management. Ryan, the big debate out there is whether or not now is the time to buy tech stocks. We've seen a resurgence in a yes. lot of these big names since the start of the year. Where do you stand on this debate? I mean, I think the momentum is going to keep going. Um, let's face it, they had a big sell-off back in December. In fact, they sold off more than the market did. So it's kind of like when you pull a rubber band back, um, the things that went down the most are going to have the biggest rebound. So I think we're in the midst of that, and the momentum is going to continue. So I'm relatively bullish. Are there any names that stick out to you? Because just taking a look at some of these names, Amazon, for example, is up over 20% since the start of the year. Apple, mm -hmm. like I said, up almost 30% since the start of the year. Facebook up over 30%. So when you take a look, I mean, even though the valuations maybe aren't as high as they were previously, they're getting back up there. Yeah, they are, um, but they're not, and I think that's the point. I mean, Amazon is like a different animal. That's like 60 times forward earnings. I'd say yeah. I'd be a little nervous, but like Apple is only at 18 times forward earnings. It's probably, you know, it's in line, or 17 times forward earnings is in line with the market. So, Where are you seeing opportunity right now outside of tech? We have the big bank CEOs testifying on Capitol Hill. They were under pressure after we had uh, the <laughs> Fed come out just taking more of a dovish stance. They've since rebounded a little bit. Are you seeing any buying opportunity there? Yeah, I am, because I think right now the, the world's priced to like very little growth, and that means interest rates are going to stay low, and I don't think that's going to be the case eventually. Let's say we get this deal with China, all of a sudden interest rates start to rise around the world, then all of a sudden interest rates rise in the U.S., and that's great for banks because they make their money on that net interest margin. So I think right now we're just being a little too pessimistic on the banks. One of the things that we saw uh, happen earlier this week, yesterday, was the IMF came out, lowered its expectation for global growth yet again. This yep. is the third time that this has happened in the last six months. Are you at all concerned about this? I was talking to some of our guests yesterday, and they were saying that, hey, when we see this, it's more of a lagging indicator, so it's not really playing into our current strategy. What do you think? Yeah, because I think everybody knows that the global market's been slowing down. It's not a secret. Uh, and, you know, the, st the stocks are priced that way now, too. I mean, if you look at valuations around the world right now, they're very, very cheap. And the reason is because we already know it's going to slow. So as a buying opportunity, you want to buy when the news isn't great, and that is a lagging indicator, and valuations are cheap. Uh, we also heard uh, we got the Fed minutes, uh, FOMC minutes, at the top of the show today. Didn't really see much change in the markets. The Dow still under a little bit of pressure, though. We're not seeing uh, the big sell-off that maybe some could have feared if we had the, uh, the Fed give a little bit more of a hawkish signal. Anything right. to about to you in those minutes, or do you expect the Fed to kind of stay the course as it is right now and not raise rates again for the rest of the year? Yeah, I think that's off the table, and I think that's one of the headwinds that we've been worrying about, that, that and a deal from China, uh, which looks like it's moving along. I don't know exactly when it's going to finish up. So I think with those things off the table, and think about it this way, we had like $80 billion come out of the market this year with the market going up. You have already had the selling out of the market. That's like a huge runway, what I would say, for the market to go another leg higher. What about Brexit? That's something that we haven't really talked about yet. Yeah. We mentioned the trade wars uh, with the U.S., also our dispute with Europe, but Brexit, I think, would be a little bit of a concern, no? I don't know. That looks like it's going to be a softer Brexit now, too. So, I mean, even the, the stance of the EU has softened a little bit there. They're extending deadlines. So it just seems to me like there's a lot of bureaucracy there. But the underlying economy in the U.K. right now, they have, like, 10-year low in unemployment. So I think mm -hmm. those economies are a lot stronger than we think, making the world just a great buy. Ryan, what, what would you say is the number one opportunity to make money out there? For our uh, viewers who are watching, they're trying to figure out where to put their money at this point in the markets. Like I said, yeah. we have the NASDAQ, the S&P, and the Dow not too far off their all-time highs. Where are you seeing the most opportunity? Okay, so I still like the U.S. markets, but to your point, they're near the all-time highs mm -hmm. right now. I think you have to think globally here. The global markets just haven't done as well. They're a lot cheaper. Um, if you look at the dollar right now, I mean, it's at a peak. That'll mm -hmm. probably start to come down at some point. So I think you got to